I think that there is a small number of tyrannical woke persons that have managed to get a chokehold on every institution, every political party. And it's this, most of us don't agree with these people and with the delusional belief system that they hold. But through a campaign of fear and intimidation and trying to cancel people, get them fired, they've managed to essentially run our culture um, and our government. And so that's, yeah, that's why we're fighting. Well, folks, I'm with Amy Ham. She is a healthcare professional and a writer from Vancouver. And you might be familiar with Miss Ham's story, and it's a hell of a story. But for those who aren't, Amy, um, you got into a bit of hot water regarding the trans community and their allies. What exactly set off that chain of events? The the big one was um, years ago now, um, sponsoring an I Heart J.K. Rowling billboard after the writer came out in support of women's sex-based rights. So that led to an onslaught of public complaints to my regulator to attempt to have me fired from uh, my nursing job. And in the, it's been more than three years. Many more complaints have come in, and I'm still fighting to keep my job, essentially. So let me get this straight. Your job is under fire yeah. as a healthcare professional, not because of any incompetence or malpractice, but because you committed the heinous crime of wrong think. Yes, I've never had a patient complaint. I've never had an issue in my workplace with performance. And the college that's persecuting me laid out in their opening arguments that this is 100% nothing to do with my uh, workplace conduct. It's it's entirely the out of work conduct and the things that I say and do and write while I'm in my own private time. And this battle with your employer, it's still ongoing. I know you can't get into all the details, but it's a little terrifying, Amy, that just because um, you're part, you were part of the billboard campaign, I love JK Rowling, and of course that billboard was vandalized in day one and taken down, um, that this could put you in an economic penalty box, if you will. Why is it, we see this increasingly in society, that everyone seems to be bending the knee to radical transgenderism I would argue, and I know I'm going to offend some people, that once upon a time, maybe even 10 years ago, these people would probably be in a mental health institution instead. It's literally the the tail wagging the dog. What is your take on this issue? (laughs) That's a very big question, of course, but I think that there is a small number of tyrannical woke persons that have managed to get a chokehold on every institution, every political party. And it's this, most of us don't agree with these people and with the delusional belief system that they hold, but through a campaign of fear and intimidation and trying to cancel people, get them fired, they've managed to essentially run our culture um, and our government. And so that's, yeah, that's why we're fighting. And I'm here today wanting to talk about free speech Um, because as much as I am becoming an advocate for women's rights, I quickly learned that I also need to be an advocate for free speech Um, because when your speech is under threat and you're censored and you're told that you could lose your livelihood, uh, you lose your reputation when, you know, when the CBC smears you across the country as a hateful bigot, um, you, you're not going, and nobody else is going to want to speak out if they see what happens to you. So... I care deeply about free speech. And then, of course, the recent uh, bill that was tabled by the Liberal government, C-63, is hugely concerning um, for all Canadians, um, and especially for someone like myself, who's already going through the ringer over a free speech issue. And indeed, it was just a little over a week ago that was tabled in the House of Commons bill, C-63. I can't imagine, Amy, that being passed into law as is. Um, It is the most censorious legislation I have ever seen enacted, not in Canada's history, but in any Western democracy. Um, For those who don't know about Bill C-63, and we've been all over it, certainly, 
um, the idea that somebody anonymously can make a complaint about you, that this law will be retroactive. So they can go back 10, 15 years, find something you said on social media and file some kind of hate complaint. Lord knows what the benchmark for hate is. And if you find out who that person's identity is, you're not allowed to out him or her, you'll face another um, penalty. And finally, uh, the idea that the state can put you under house arrest for something that you might say in the future that is hateful. I mean, my God, Amy, this is 1984 yeah. meets Minority Report. It's horrifying. Like you mentioned, if a judge deems that a complainant has a reasonable ground for being afraid or for fearing that someone else might say something that could be hateful and hateful being a term that is very subjective and it will be defined by the ruling liberal party um you you can be in trouble you can be penalized they've even said that persons uh can get a life sentence for hate posting hate online where wherein hate is defined in such a vague manner that you know it's obviously meant to threaten political dissidents and to chill their speech and possibly to imprison them. And, and you know, there's all this concern about so-called hate speech online. And as you said, we don't have the uh, a proper definition of hate. It's very nebulous. And yet right now, since October 7th of last year, we see pure hatred on the streets. We see pro-Hamas uh, demonstrators making genocidal chants and Amy. I'm pretty much a free speech absolutist, but my, you know, my saying has always been the free speech line in the sand is if you advocate harm or death to an individual or an identifiable group of individuals, um, that's offside. And yet we're seeing this virtually every weekend in so many Canadian and other Western cities. What do you make of the fact that the Trudeau liberals are so gung ho about this uh, online hate? And here's hate classic happening on the streets of Canada, and they shrug. Yeah, it's a case in point of why this legislation is so dangerous. It is a tool to be used by the state to punish and silence and destroy the lives of political dissidents who they happen to disagree with and who happen to disagree with the prevailing orthodoxy, which right now in Canada is a very out of touch with reality and dangerous orthodoxy, as I'm sure you know. Well, I'm so happy you're covering this. You know, we did Streeters at Young Dundas, and it's sad, you know, the how, you know, few Canadians are engaged about legislation that is literally going to affect their lives. And uh, I mean, if we talk about Bill C-63, they'll say what? If we ask them about Kim Kardashian's new bikini, man, they'll talk to the cows come home. But, you know, we did a little trick and it was, hey, did you hear about Vladimir Putin's new hate speech law. Uh, and then we uh, talked about all the uh, penalties and stipulations that we just discussed about Bill C-63. And the typical answer is, well, thank goodness I live in Canada, a free democracy. And I go, sir, I was tricking you. This is a Justin Trudeau liberal initiative. And uh, it was a, a real shocker for the vast majority of people. So go to Russia and start talking about the government and see what happens, right? But that's where we're going right now. That's the same thing that's gonna happen here. People voted him in, right? So now we have to vote him out. And I think people need to kind of put on some thicker skin. Like, unfortunately, there is criticism within the world. Fruit speech was dead for a while now in Canada. You're concentrating on Bill C-63 in your writing. Um, Amy, uh, whether it's your healthcare uh, career that is at stake right now or what you're hoping to write about in the near future, last word goes to you, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. Um, oh, where to start? You know, the positive thing, I, I haven't lost hope entirely in Canada. And I also am reminded that in 2013, our former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Conservative, he actually um, axed very similar legislation about um, hate speech because he felt that it was so vague that it was intended to censor political speech. 
and it's looking as though Pierre Polyev will be our next prime minister. And I, I'm hopeful that he will do the same thing. Well, Amy, you are a very brave woman. Can I call you a woman on here on International Women's Day? It's okay? Please do, yes. Okay, then. Good luck. All the best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amy. Wow, the common sense espoused at this uh, conference. It was a shock to the system, given the garbage that we have to listen to from the radical elites, from politicians to our mainstream media types. Folks, if you want to take a stand against transanity, please go to transmadness.com. That's transmadness.com. Sign the petition and please, if you're able to, kindly make a donation.